Carrie, what do you think of when you hear the word spicy? Mm, mouth pain. I mean, you know, tastes like burning. <laughs> kind of. But today's recipe just might surprise you. Oh, is it super hot? No, I think that the word spicy was used in the title of this recipe more as alliteration than as a description of fiery seasoning. Oh, well, isn't that interesting? It is indeed. I can't wait to get started. Welcome to Mom's Wooden Spoon. Get your apron on and your fanny flicker ready as we cook up some nostalgia. Ooh, yummy. Hi, I'm Kristen. And I'm Carrie. Hey, Carrie, I have a question for you. Oh, okay, I'm ready. What's green and goes to summer camp? Oh, um, nope, I got nothing. A Brussels scout. Oh, <laughs> that is so bad, isn't it? <laughs> you told a dad joke. I did. <laughs> Today's recipe is called Spicy Sprouts. So I wanted to be a little spicy. I love the honesty of our podcast in that I did not just laugh. That's <laughs> true. It was just, such a bad joke. I just kind of <laughs> stared at you dead eyed. Well, why are you <laughs> telling this horrible joke? All right. So back to spicy sprouts. Yes. This recipe comes from Mary's Memo, February 12th, 1979. Ooh. Now, as I was looking at this recipe, Carrie, I was wondering, gosh, what makes it spicy? Spicy. Well, I'm excited to hear. I know. Tabasco. Right. Your husband would love that. My husband loves spicy foods. I do too. Red chili peppers. Ooh, little chili flakes. That's what they're called. No, Carrie. A teaspoon and a half of Dijon mustard. What? (laughs) That's what makes it spicy. Wow. Yeah, and not to mention, spicy is spelled S-P-I-C-E-Y. Because that's how spicy people spell it. (laughs) I wondered why Mary would have spelled spicy that way, Mm -hmm. and I looked it up. Okay. Apparently, it is kind of an antiquated way of spelling spicy. So it's yeah, it's not wrong. Right. It just is kind of an old fashioned way and that everybody spells it S P I C Y nowadays. Is that kind of like the possum opossum <laughs> idea? You're a smart aleck. <laughs> Carrie's family makes fun of me for saying opossum and not just possum. possum. So I'd like to hear from you all to back me up or not, and let us know how you pronounce possum. Is it Opossum? Like me? Right. Do you get caught doing something and you just stop and you play dead like an opossum? You're such a jerk. Or like a possum. (laughs) All right. So spicy sprouts. Here's the recipe. It says at the top of it, people either like Brussels sprouts or they don't. But for all who do, here's a spicy way to serve them. Fantastic. Yep. So it is... Brussels sprouts? Yep. How'd you guess? I'm smart. Yep. One pint of fresh sprouts, cleaned and crisp, tender, cooked and drained. And oh, do I have a story about crisp, tender and pints. Okay. Yep. And then a half a stick of butter that you mix with the incredibly huge amount of Dijon mustard. Mm -hmm. And then a teaspoon of dry minced parsley, which has so much flavor. Yes. And then we don't want to get crazy. You don't want to overpower the spice of the mustard with No, no. Or overpower the extremely mild flavor. Of Brussels sprouts. <laughs> and then it has, you know, to add to the flavor, not an eighth of a teaspoon, not a quarter of a teaspoon of garlic powder, a speck. A speck, mm-hmm. not even a dash. I know, right? Or a pinch. No, it is a speck, less than an eighth of a teaspoon of garlic powder. Wow. Yeah, so we're going to give this a try. All right, so the first thing we need to do is clean these. And it said to cook them until they were crisp tender. And I thought, what did they mean by crisp tender in the 1970s? Well, because if we're going to cook them and then drain, obviously we're boiling them. Right. And so I had to look this up. And when I did, apparently crisp tender is a housewife or anybody living in the 70s, their way to get away from the old fashioned boiling until it's mush. Okay. Right. And so crisp tender came out in the 70s as a way to not turn vegetables into complete and utter mush. And so I had to look up 
how cooking crisp tender works, right? Right. Because we really don't boil vegetables much anymore. No. Yep. And so I found uh, a recipe for it where you basically are blanching them. Oh. Except for we are not going to plunge them into freezing cold ice water because... I don't want cold sprouts mixed with half a stick of butter. Right. So you blanch them and you just take them out at about eight minutes is what I found. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, I would like to thank Culinary Progress (laughs) for moving past the boiling of vegetables to mush. Well, I looked up why people boiled vegetables when there's so many beautiful ways to cook them, to roast them, to saute them. And what I found is that people did not roast vegetables because way back in the day in England, the oven was not thought of for doing anything but baking breads and cakes. So the stovetop was where you prepared vegetables and meat, unless it was something large like a leg of lamb. Sure. Well, and then also I would imagine that ovens, well, they weren't as well insulated as they are now. So in the summer, when all these fresh vegetables are available, who wants to heat the house up to epic temperatures right. for some Brussels sprouts? You throw them on the stovetop. Yep. And so they have been boiled since the beginning of time. Hence the reason Carrie and I affectionately call them green gag balls. Oh, they totally are. (laughs) I love them today. I roast them Mm -hmm. in some olive oil and then put a little balsamic vinegar and bacon. And I even put a little sprinkling of pomegranate seeds on the top and it's so good. There's a million delicious ways to cook Brussels sprouts that does not involve uh, boiling them. That's true. And a lot of them do involve the bacon. Oh, well, because bacon makes everything better. Now, it's funny, Carrie. I decided to look up the origin of the word green gag balls. (laughs) So did I. Oh, no. It was bad. Listeners, do not Google the words green gag balls. You will not get Brussels sprouts. It is not a family-friendly oriented (laughs) result list. You didn't do it while at work, did you? I did not. That would have been horrible. Mortifying. Oh, my goodness. I did that at work once. I had gone to a conference and heard a lady speak, and I needed some information about her. And I couldn't quite remember her name, so I was just kind of, you know, throwing it into the search engine, see what I could find. And she came up with her own website, and I know she was, you know, kind of known in the field. So I clicked on it. She was a porn star. It was not the woman. Oh my goodness. I heard speak. It was a a work-related speaking engagement. And so I just looked up a porn star at work. Uh Oh, I immediately ran and told my boss who laughed so hard. She cried. (laughs) Um, She was not sensitive to my concern (laughs) at all. I was young too. Oh, well, at least she didn't get in trouble. I didn't know. Right. So we're picking up a pint of Brussels sprouts and I have a funny story. One of my friends, tells this story about her childhood. Her mom sent her to the corner store with a list. Okay. And she was supposed to get a pint of beans. Well, she had only ever read the word pint. And so she went to the counter and said, hello, I would like a pint of beans, please. And the person at the counter laughed at her and she was mortified. Poor thing. But you know, that happens to a lot of people there. I know that you make fun of my TikTok um, addiction. Addiction. Okay, I'll admit it. And there are some TikTokers who have recently been talking about the words that they mispronounced for a long time because they had only ever read them. Yes. You know, like words like epitome. Mm. They would say epitome, epitome right? Mm. Uh, let's see. Some others, posthumous, posthumous, mm-hmm. right? My husband is famous for being 21 years old and ordering a carafe of wine. Oh, it's a carafe. Yeah. Oh. They, they didn't know what he was talking about. A carafe of a carafe. I think we've all done that. He was on a date. He thought oh. he was being so suave. Oh, I feel so bad for him. Oh, my goodness. Yep. So I'm sure we've all done stuff oh, like yeah. that. Our stepdad. When he was a little boy, he used to read Batman and Robin comics and would mispronounce Batman and Robin, the Dynamic Do. The Dynamic Do. That's so great. If you're not a fan, they are the Dynamic Duo. (laughs) 
Um, yeah. Yeah. And I think his brother read him the comics and he was the one who mispronounced it. So then they both just thought oh. it was the dynamic doom. Of course. Yes. Yeah. Well, so we have trimmed the little stems and any of the gross kind of mildewy pieces off of these Brussels sprouts. Yep. And we're going to pop them in a, a pot of boiling salted water for eight minutes. Okay. The Brussels sprouts are in the pot boiling until they're tender crisp or crisp tender. Fantastic. I'm happy that they are not mush. Yeah. Well, here's hoping that they're not. Right. That's what I remember as a kid. The green gag balls <laughs> were kind of white and mushy. Oh, yeah. It kind of boiled all the color out of them. Mm -hmm. And this is the point of tender crisp is to, when you blanch things, they stay bright green. Sure. Or brightly colored. So right. here's hoping. I'm going to go take a peek in a minute and see how they're doing. But we did set the timer for eight minutes. They were tiny little Brussels sprouts. So mm -hmm. I, I may want to check them and see if they are crisp tender in maybe six minutes or so. Sure. We'll see. Yeah. I think that sounds great. All right. You had mentioned just a little bit ago that you love Brussels sprouts. I do. Hated them as a kid. Oh, yes. Really enjoy them now. Uh, yes. There's a scientific reason for this. What? Yeah. So they have been breeding Brussels sprouts so that they are becoming less bitter. Oh my gosh. It's a whole lot of science wow. about the chemical in it. It's They're made that way so that bugs don't eat them because it's unappealing to bugs as well. So they naturally grow that way so they don't get bug eaten. Yeah. Right. But then they don't taste as good. Right. So whatever that chemical is, they've bred it so that there's less of that oh gosh. in today's Brussels sprouts. So the reason people who hated them of days past, it may be because we're not boiling them within an inch of their life. Right. But it may be because the Brussels sprout actually tastes less bitter today. Well, I do not think that they taste as bitter as I remember them, but I always, always oven roast them. Right. Or I cook them in a skillet and I let them get super, super brown on the bottoms. I cut them in half and then I flip them over and let the, the backs get good and brown. And I think that roasting um, kind of brings out the sweetness of them and kind of cuts down on the bitter. Oh, the crispy Brussels sprout bits oh, are just the best. <laughs> you remember every time I make Brussels sprouts for one of our holiday get togethers, mm -hmm. you and your daughter always say, will you burn them please? And so I, I do. And the last time we got together, I asked mom how she liked the, the meal. And she goes, I loved it all, except for somebody burned the Brussels sprouts. <laughs> it's all Carrie's fault. That's what she wanted. And my daughter and I will stand over there and pick out the little crispy pieces. <laughs> like, we love them. Yes, you do. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. So when I was looking up Brussels sprouts, I was um, looking up different ways that you could use them. Okay. And I found an April Fool's recipe that you might want to try. Oh, okay. I might know what this is. So yes. let's, let's okay. see. So you know how you make those delicious kind of truffle balls. You take crunched up Oreo mm. cookies and you mix them with like cream cheese or frosting. Yes. And well, you can make cake balls like this too. You can take your leftover cake and mix it with frosting, make balls. Yep. And then you dip them in chocolate. Yes. Well, this mom took uncooked Brussels sprouts, dipped them in chocolate, decorated them with sprinkles and drizzles, and presented those to her sons on April Fool's Day. <laughs> so mean. I saw some lady <laughs> that did that and used um, a candy wrapper of like those kind of balls, like the, I don't know how you pronounce it, that Ferrara. Ferrara Rocher. Yes. And they took out the candy, put those in, and then handed them out as trick-or-treat candy. What? So <laughs> That's almost worse than putting needles in something that gets trick or treat candy. <laughs> so, or maybe that kid belongs to parents who, who pilfer all the good candy. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine the parent biting into that? They're like, ooh, French candy. <laughs> Now, mind you, folks, I do not uh, in any way endorse putting needles. Oh, in my candy. gosh. That was just what we were always told as kids. Our yes. parents said, we need to go through your candy to check for needles yes. and pins in it. Well, back in the day, you could take your candy to McDonald's and they would scan it. Have I made that up or is that No, true? I think that might have been true. I don't think yeah. we ever did that. No, but you could. Mom just did it by taste testing all of our candy. <laughs> 
<laughs> Ooh, that's big enough to have a needle bite. Ooh. Yeah, let me check that out, guys. That goes along with cleaning up the ice cream cone. Let, let me clean it up for you, and then you get your ice cream cone back, and it's half gone. I don't know what happened. Could I have a little taste of your candy bar? And you look, and it's like a quarter of it left. What? I swear as a kid. She would ask for a bite of the candy bar, and I would watch wide-eyed as half of the candy bar would disappear into, in my child mind, her gaping pie hole. It was, oh, it was so traumatic. And I'm purposefully taking these small little bites to, to save enjoy. it. Oh, yes. you were a saver, too. You hoarded your Halloween candy mm -hmm. and made sure that, you know, sometimes you put it in your room and you would be very careful about it and eat it very slowly. I did not. I ate the heck out of my candy. But if you left it out, our parents' friends would come over and pilfer our Halloween candy. Oh, and I would... That reminds me. I would <laughs> eat all of the bad, like the Tootsie Rolls. Yeah. Tootsie Rolls and the other, not that Tootsie Rolls are bad. They were my least favorite. So I would save all the chocolate bars and all the Ferrero fer fer Rocher. We never got Ferrero Rochers. <laughs> What are you talking about? <laughs> but I would I would save all the good candy for last and eat my least favorites first. And then our parents had a friend over and she said, oh, can I have some of your Halloween candy? Sure, of course. And then she never asked again, but continued to get up and go back to the Halloween candy oh. bowl over and oh, And it's all my good stuff. Yeah. My most favorite, and she's just, I, as a kid, I swear she ate half. And I knew if I said something, I, I mean, I was a goner. That was traumatic because this oh. was, you know, it was a time when we didn't really go get stuff like no. that. Nowadays, my kid could get candy whenever he wants. Right. You know, but then this was like our store for a couple of months. Yes. Our hoard of candy. So well, to have someone take the best pieces. Yeah. You know, I remember I was in band in middle school. Mm -hmm. And did you ever participate in anything where you had to sell those world's finest chocolate bars? I did not. Yes. Yeah, so you come home with this gigantic box of world's finest chocolate bars and they're sitting in your bedroom and you just start eating. Of course, because it's just one. Just one. And then you get down and half the box is gone. You're like, oh, I owe $50. <laughs> <laughs> this is the world's finest chocolate. I can't stop eating it. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like we have about 26 seconds. So okay. I'm going to go check the Brussels sprouts and see if they look green and tender crisp. Perfect. And while you do that, I also looked up some things about Brussels sprouts. And much to my surprise, I found them mentioned on WebMD. What? Why? I don't know, but I feel like I need to tell you what I found. I'm so very interested. They're um, apparently a food source, obviously, and a medicine. A medicine? And so then it tells you that the Brussels sprout is taken by mouth. Oh, God, what else are you going to do with it? <laughs> what are the other choices? <laughs> um, and then it has a whole bunch of things that it could fix. Um, this is my favorite line. When taken by mouth, <laughs> Brussels sprout is likely safe when consumed in food amounts. What the heck does that mean? They're a food. <laughs> that is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> I was, what? <laughs> it's a vegetable. You're it's supposed to eat them. Likely safe. What's a food amount? I don't know. <laughs> What's a food amount? That is crazy. I couldn't believe it. Oh my God. Well, I've taken the Brussels sprouts out, and they okay. are nice and bright green. Oh, cool. And so we're going to, um, I'm going to test it with a little fork and see if it is tender or crisp. It, well, it feels tender, crisp. I guess we're going to find out, the right? The fork went into it, so that's a good sign. Definitely tender, right? Yeah. So we're going to add the Dijon mustard okay. to the butter. I think we have to whip it up uh, along with our speck of garlic powder and our teaspoon of the parsley, parsley flakes. So okay. let's do the parsley flakes first, yep. an entire teaspoon. All right, then I'm going to start with the Dijon mustard. So I was thinking about Dijon mustard and I remembered 
that I did. <laughs> it's basically the dumbest thing ever when we went out after Christmas shopping. Now, Carrie and I love going after Christmas shopping. It is almost better than Christmas oh, because we favorite. get the best deals. It is just so, so fun. And you kind of get in a shopper's rush. Frenzy. Yes. And you're like, oh my gosh. Okay. So that is so cheap. Who would like that? And then by the time you get to the end of it, you're like, I don't care who would like that. That's cheap. I'm buying it. Originally $20 and I'm getting it for five. I've got to get it no matter what. Somebody will love it. Somebody's going to love this. So I purchased... A mustard tree. Is it like in a pot? No, it's little teeny tiny jars of specially flavored Dijon mustard in a little triangularly shaped box. Did you buy that to give to me? You hate mustard. I would oh, not do that. Boy, do I hate mustard. <laughs> so I thought, who could I? oh, I can find someone to give a mustard tree to. Carrie, who wants a mustard tree for Christmas? Well, I surely cannot imagine. I can't imagine why on earth I bought that. So... I pulled that out of the gift closet, and we're going to try some. Okay. Okay, so I think one half of our Brussels sprouts will be in regular, I'm doing air quotes, spicy Dijon. Ooh, all right. And then the other one, we have three mustards to choose from. And Carrie, because I love you, I'm going to give you the choice. <laughs> awesome. I feel like I need to interject before we proceed with the mustard selection. I do hate mustard. You do. I have a reason. Oh, that's right. Yes, you do. It's so bad. So when I was a kid, my mom put mothballs in our garden to keep the rabbits away. That's right. Apparently the smell, they don't like it. So I'm not sure if it actually works, but she did it. I bet it doesn't. Yeah. But that's another story for another, for another day. Yes. So I went out and came back in. And as she would say, I had mothball breath. So I think <laughs> odds are pretty good. I popped it in my mouth. It was unpleasant. Right. I spit it out. But they're, you know, highly toxic. That's right. But you had a good reason. You weren't just some weirdo kid eating mothballs. Mom and dad had come back from a vacation in Scotland. Yes. And they had purchased little cookies, little teeny tiny cookies, covered in powdered sugar that kind of looked like mothballs. Right, because every kid should eat cookies out of the garden. But yes, <laughs> yeah. So let's go with, let's give me the benefit of the doubt. It looked like, like a oh, cookie. A super fresh cookie laying right here in the dirt. How delicious. Gosh, today is my lucky day. Picked that up, popped it in my mouth. Went, oh, not a cookie. Spit it out, came in. Mom smelled mothball on my breath. Freaked out. She did, I remember called the doctor who said give her mustard what i recall is sitting on the counter crying as my mom is taking yellow mustard by the spoonful <sighs> and shoving them in my mouth and making me swallow them <sighs> and i had multiple spoonfuls yes and i did not let go of the mothball um she ultimately took matters into her own hand literally and um she stuck her finger down your throat yeah oh yeah. my goodness she was worried she was scared to death you know and she was a nurse so i'm surprised we didn't have like ipecac or a right but i i think i had heard that dry mustard is supposed to make you throw up but well that's what she has always said she didn't realize that the doctor meant dry mustard so i thought well let me look that up yeah. is that real no Dry mustard does it. Oh my gosh. Can you imagine if she had put dry mustard in your mouth? You would have been like those kids and those people thing. who did the cinnamon challenge. Yeah. It would have come out your nose. Your eyes would have been watering. Yes. Oh, so bad. And they were watering with the spoonfuls of mustard. Oh, no wonder you hate mustard. Yeah. All right. So let's take a look at these delicious mustards <laughs> yeah. on a mustard tree. Well, let me dip my finger in them each and try them I'm out. opening them all. These cost $5. You <laughs> pick your dag on what you want. And they are all Dijon-based mustards. Okay. So what is yours? Mine is horseradish. Ooh, and you like horseradish. I do. This one is Maine maple champagne mustard. Oh, I, I'm going to definitely say no to that. No? That does not sound not good. Sound no. And our other choice is blue cheese herb mustard. Ooh. What shall we do? What shall we do? You know... I like the look of the blue cheese herb mustard. It's very herby looking. Yeah. So let's try that one. Okay. All right. So how about if you take the Dijon, the fancy one, and put it in okay. with the butter, and then we're going to mix these up, and I will take the regular Dijon. We have halved the butter, so we're going to put half of the Brussels sprouts into each container, so right. don't use... 
a Absolutely. full dose of mustard. Right. So the, the mustard, it calls for one and a half teaspoons of Dijon. And so we're cutting that in half. So it's we need like, what, three quarters of a teaspoon. Okay. So we'll just kind of fake that. Perfect. So we're going to mix the mustard with the butter and the parsley and the speck of garlic. And I am going to get these very green Brussels sprouts out of the strainer. And we're going to mix them up in the bowls. We'll kind of do half and half and see how this tastes. The reason I think that they call it spicy sprouts is because Dijon mustard is considered spicier than yellow mustard because it's made with brown mustard seeds yes. instead of yellow. Yes. And brown are supposed to be a little bit spicier. I don't necessarily think of Dijon as being spicier. I just think of it as having it like a little different flavor. So I'm going to add my sprouts to the Dijon butter. Let's mix them up and see what a pint of Brussels sprouts taste like in this compound butter. All right, let's stir this up. Oh, Carrie, this one with just the plain Dijon is quite strong. Is it? Maybe it's going to be spicy. I'm going to scoop mine on the right-hand side, and you scoop yours on the left-hand side. Right, Ooh, so they're so pretty. All right, so this okay. is a February recipe from 1979. And while we have talked a lot about Brussels sprouts, mm -hmm. we haven't mentioned the time frame that all of this was going on. Right. Valentine's Day, oh. 1979. I mean, this is like a meal of love right here. I guess so. Yeah. And so had you, Valentine's Day, 1979, made this for your one true love, you could have then sat down and watched the Valentine's primetime specials of that evening. Oh, what would they have been? At first, you would have been treated to the Bugs Bunny Valentine's Day special where Elmer Fudd is Cupid making them all fall in love with each other from his <laughs> Cupid arrows, followed by the Popeye Valentine's special, oh my in which Popeye does not give olive oil a gift. And oh. in a fit of rage, she boards the Valentine boat in search of a new Valentine. Oh. For Valent and then, of course, hijinks and Bluto are involved. You know, it's funny that they had um, cartoon Valentine specials. Yeah. Because when I looked up the date, 1979, I found out something very, very special. Hmm. That it was the year that Scrappy-Doo premiered in Scooby-Doo. Oh, oh, the year <laughs> Scooby-Doo jumped the shark. No, but you know what that reminds me of? Hmm. Our cousin Hank's Scrappy Traps. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> and are you going to tell the story where yeah, you, you yeah, totally absolutely. pinned one on him? I, I really did. So we went to visit them and... He was big into making scrappy traps. Yeah, right? which were, he would put a, I don't know, like a, a bookshelf in front of a door and then get you to come in and you push and you're like, I oh, know it's stuck. He's like, no, no, just push harder until you knocked over the entire bookshelf and then laugh hysterically and leave you to clean up the bookshelf. And he goes, scrappy trap. Yes. Right. So I went into my aunt and uncle's bedroom and I got on their exercise bicycle. Mm -hmm. And as I was pedaling, the curtains got stuck in the pedals and it ripped the curtains off of the wall. Oh, the curtain rod and everything. The whole curtain rod and everything came down and Oh, you were Me, humiliated. I was, I was humiliated, first of all. And second of all, I blamed it on his scrappy traps. Hank set a scrappy trap for he me. He did. And you know what? He didn't say he didn't. So I was <laughs> with it. He was probably was like, oh, I should have thought of that. That's right. <laughs> but I didn't get in trouble because good old Hank was doing scrappy <laughs> traps. <laughs> all right. So I'm going to get out some plates, some forks. We're going to try these and let you know how they taste. We'll be right back. Okay, well, we decided to just forego the plates. Why get those dirty when we can eat directly out of the serving container? I'm for it. Absolutely. <laughs> it's just us, right? Yes. All right. So Kira's going to go first. Which one would you like to taste first? Well, I have tasted the butter of the Dijon, yeah. and I will be honest in that I am not super excited to try that again. Okay, it so was, try the blue cheese. Yes, yeah, it was pretty mustardy for me. Yeah. Um, well, it's funny. Um, while she chews that, I'm going to see if she remembers a soda that we had one Thanksgiving. <laughs> Do you remember? Mm -hmm. We bought a case of these Thanksgiving flavored sodas and they were, some of them were delicious, pumpkin pie, mm -hmm. cranberry sauce, but then it got weird. It got to be turkey and gravy. 
Yep. Stuffing mm -hmm. and Brussels sprouts. Yes. So before we talk about how delicious those sodas were, not at all. Um, <laughs> tell us, what'd you think of the blue cheese Brussels sprouts? I mean, it is absolutely not even remotely spicy. Mm -hmm. The Brussels sprouts are not bad. There's a little crunch going on there. Oh, I got them crisp tender. Mm -hmm. oh, tender crisp. I you can't really remember did. which way. You really did. And I tried the blue cheese uh, Dijon, and there's a nice flavor of blue cheese followed by a mild hint of Dijon. It did not make me mustard pucker. Mm -hmm. um, and I found it <laughs> mustard pucker. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. <laughs> that sounds so inappropriate. <laughs> oh, I eat mustard though, and my whole face <laughs> just. Uh, just freezes. <laughs> Every muscle in my face contracts. Oh my goodness. Late. I just dislike it. So I, that didn't happen. It, it was not bad. You know, I just tried the plain Dijon ones. Yes. I cannot taste the Dijon. We'll get, find get, out. Go for okay, it. I'm going right. to try. You, you try one. Don't eat one as I eat I'm one. not going to eat a blue cheese okay. as you eat them, but you give that a try. So <sighs> I'm truly nervous. Oh, you're going to I got this. You're going to have this. So back to the sodas. I think actually the Brussels sprouts weren't as bad as the turkey and gravy to me. Mm. Drinking liquid turkey just was awful, awful to me. Um, I do not like those. No? Mm -mm. What don't you like about ah, it? Ah, the all of it. Oh, I just thought they were just fine, but they didn't have that much flavor. I guess I should have gotten a little more of the butter maybe, on it. Maybe it is honestly just the mustard flavor that mm -hmm. there's just enough of it that it's thoroughly unappealing to me, but I would not eat the Dijon, but I would absolutely eat the blue cheese Dijon Brussels sprouts. They are so good. Mm -hmm. The blue cheese Dijon is 10 times better. It is. Oops. Delicious. But yes. of course, there was no blue cheese Dijon in our little hometown. No. In the 70s. No. I mean, heck, as far as our home refrigerator was concerned, there was no Dijon. It was mm -hmm. yellow or nothing. Mm -hmm. Um, so, I mean, this was kind of fancy in the fact that you were using Dijon, Dijon and mustard. That's right. Um, but since we got the chance to modernize the recipe, I think using one of those fancy Dijons is, oh, now we have ruined your opportunity to pass on this recipe and the mustard tree to one of your very best friends. Oh, no. Not me. Okay. I won't pass on that mustard tree to you, but... You know, this does give me room to make these Brussels sprouts again and try the main maple champagne and the horseradish. I think the horseradish will be delicious. The main maple champagne may also be good. It just, I don't know why, it just sounds so unappealing to me that yeah but you know horseradish um would actually make these spicy sprouts it really oh we should have done that i didn't think of it that would have been know. perfect oh well the blue cheese was really really good well i would say to the original recipe i would not give it a thumbs up but to the amended recipe i would absolutely give it a thumbs up i would eat those i would willingly serve those to somebody and you know, they were tender, crisp. They were not the boiled Brussels sprouts of our childhood. No, I had no idea you could do that. Yep. So it's eight minutes, boiling water. These were even itty bitty little Brussels sprouts. Mm -hmm. And the eight minutes was not too much. They came out bright green. I highly salted the water. It was great. They were not green gag balls. Not one bit. Wow. Well, that's it for this episode. As always, to see pictures of the food we cooked today and a copy of the original Mary's Memo recipe, just head over to momswoodenspoon.com. If you enjoyed today's podcast, please let your friends and family know about us. We would really appreciate it. Thanks for listening to Mom's Wooden Spoon. If you like what you heard, don't forget to subscribe. If you want a copy of this recipe or to check out our blog, click on the link to our website in the podcast description. If you'd rather, you could get to our website through Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. Pick your poison. Don't say poison. We're making food.